I've been wanting to make a video about this topic since I entered into the season of life that I am just leaving. What is so valuable and important about developing this seasons of life awareness is that it gives us power back. You and I are going to unpack the value of developing this awareness, as I call it, for how you can set yourself up for success, to reduce resistance that we might feel, you know, that feeling like we're sometimes wading through water, and also capitalize on momentum in a given place, a certain season that we're in. As I've grown older and the seasons of my life have become more distinct, I've been able to recognize that a lot of the frustrations, the pain that I experienced was because I was trying to live my life of one season in the season I was currently in. And that's like dressing for summer when clearly it's winter right now. If we can develop this awareness for where we are, the context around us, our internal state, what that means for what we should focus on, what we should be engaging with, we can set ourselves up for greater success. We can capitalize on momentum of a given con context. We can calibrate our expectations to be kinder to ourselves, to not put so much pressure on ourselves when we're not in the season for that thing. And now I'm speaking to myself, but maybe you experience this as well. It gives us control over our life, irregardless of the external state, the things that happen to us that we cannot control, as well as the internal state, things like our health, our emotional state, our mental state. Part of this internal state we can control, but unless you are enlightened or a stoic or you know, some other person who is able to completely disassociate themselves from what's happening in the world around them, our internal state is to some degree reactive to the world around us. For many of us, external factors are inevitably going to affect our internal state, whether it's what's happening in the world, something that is happening close to us. I also consider an external factor something like an injury that then prevents us from doing something that we like to engage in um, and might have a reaction on our internal state, you know, our emotions and so on. But other factors on the external side are where we live, who do we have in our lives, and so some of these things we can control and some of these things we cannot. So to unpack both out of our control and in our control, I want to give you two overarching seasons of my life that through recognizing them, I've been able to move through them with greater ease. And the first one, which didn't start out that way, I also hadn't developed the seasons of life mindset, was the experience I had with my father from his diagnosis with cancer all the way to his passing. And that phase was around three years. I got my father's cancer diagnosis three months after I moved to Sweden. So I went from starting this season of life where I was independent and I was energetic and I was meeting people and I was engaging in such intellectually stimulating work. All of a sudden, this shock to the system, this external thing that I could not control and no one could, that affected my internal state. I was more emotionally volatile. I had less energy to put into things. I was more selfish. I was thinking more about myself than other people. And these are all very natural reactions. I entered into what I also label survival mode. And some of the pain and resistance I experienced in maybe the first year or two of the season was that I was still trying to live my life of before for the season I was in now, where the circumstances outside had changed, even though, you know, some external things were the same. I was living in the same place, had the same job, same apartment and so on. My internal state was different. And so the season of life that I was in was different. Later in the season, when I did realize, OK, I'm going to have to prioritize here. I can't put all of my energy into work and be that high achiever that I consider myself to be right now. So that did dictate what jobs I chose. I had an opportunity to take on a very high workload uh, job but be very close to senior leadership and get exposure to the full breadth of what the company did. With an awareness at this point for what season I was in, I realized that I could not do that. At any moment, I would have to drop my life and go to my father. Because that was always looming in the back of my mind, I always made sure to keep a certain degree of capacity available for anything that might crop up. And so my decisions at that point were made with consideration for the season of life that I was in. And that helped me so much when the time did come that I had to drop everything and go to my father. I had set up my life and the conditions of my life for that. More recently with this seasons of life awareness that I've developed, 
I did much better in the initial shift from one season to another. And this was the shift of coming out of grief into the season that I've just experienced and that I am leaving now, which is also, you might recognize, where I paused making videos for the past four months because I made two big decisions. This is where, you know, the external factors I spoke about earlier were in my control. I chose to take on a big project at work, which was where I demonstrated my capabilities and showed the degree to which I can work. And that was something that I held back from in the previous seasons that I was in. And two, I bought this apartment, which is why you might hear a bit of an echo in this video because I have no furniture in this room that I'm now filming in. But that was an incredibly stressful period. I had to learn everything about the Swedish system. I had to get my finances in order. I had to make some big, big decisions. So these two big things were things that I chose. And of course, I could have also chosen to prioritize making videos and content during that period and maybe deprioritize other things like socializing and health and fitness. But I felt that at that point, the most important things were to get my shit in order at work and to set up the season that I'm hoping to enter now in the best way possible, which is to provide myself a stable base in terms of my home. And I made that decision very consciously that not only would that unlock me and my potential, you know, develop me in a personal way, but also set me up for the life that I want to live. So unlike with my dad, which was outside of my control, here I consciously shifted some external factors that then meant my internal state had reached its capacity. I could only take on so much pressure and stress at a given moment while still maintaining a healthy level of other things in my life. And to bring it back to this concept of momentum, at this point, the momentum was with work. My project was reaching its final point and I had to put everything into it to make sure that it happened. And then with this apartment, the market moves so quickly that to get this apartment, I really had to jump on it. The momentum at that point was with these other two spaces, not creating content. And so this brings me to the last point, which is we can intentionally craft the season of life we are in, but we do need to be aware of our external and our internal factors. So wrapping these previous two sections together. With my dad, the external factors and the subsequent internal factors had stacked up too much for me to have much playing room to craft my season of life. So at that point, I just had to recognize and accept and adjust my lifestyle. Whereas now that I've got this apartment, I've got the secure base, I understand my workload at work for the next couple of months and what's expected from me, I have much more playing room for me to set up the different factors. So the season of life I can enter into now uh, is quite specific, which is I want to realize my ambition of creating content. Some of it will be videos, some of it will be on my blog, some of it will be LinkedIn posts, and I'm going to set up my life to do that. Because I have the seasons of life vocabulary now, it's easier for me to name it with the important people in my life. I can clearly say, I'm going to be in a season of life now where I create content. That's going to be my priority. And I hope you understand that it's not that I don't care about you, that I'm not coming to every single friend event, or I'm not prioritizing that dinner that we usually have every week or something. You know, I, I don't know, I'm not talking, I'm talking about my ass here. But if we can name it and we can communicate it to the people that are important, then hopefully they can understand what phase we're in. The other nice thing about the seasons of life concept is that it's a season. There are going to be shifts that take place. It is not forever. And that impermanence also means we can take on hard things because it's not forever. So to recap a little bit, we have external things that happen that can sometimes shift us into a different season of life than where we were. And if we can understand when the shift is taking place, we can gain an element of control, or at least an element of awareness that allows us to set ourselves up for less resistance and to move through that season with greater ease. Hopefully, we can also start to capitalize on upswings and gain upside potential from the season of life that we are in. For example, with my father, an upswing there is, I recognize that our time is limited and that at this point I need to focus on him. I did things with my dad that at some point I will share on this channel that I will value for the rest of my life. Even though it was a dark time, something very positive and meaningful still came out of it for me because I was aware of what phase of life, what season I was in with him. Some of the questions I will leave you with to reflect on are, what was the season of life where I was happiest? What were the elements in that life? 
what was the season of life where I felt the most resistance, where it felt like I was wading waist deep in water with my arms up, trying to stay afloat and not get knocked off balance. What was that? What, what was happening? How could that have been a better experience if I had recognized where I was and shifted my expectations and what my priorities were at that point? Maybe another one I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. What is the season of life that I want to experience that I haven't? And what are the external factors that I need to set up in order to experience that thing? I will leave you with those questions. I hope you enjoyed this, appreciated it, gave some value from it. I've been thinking a lot about this and I feel like as I engage with this topic more, I will make another video that goes into greater depth in other ways, even though this has been a pretty deep video. I think there's still a lot to unpack and unpack here to gain even more value from this way of thinking. I will see you in the next one.